What's up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at an Arteezy Chaos Knight replay. He ended this game 23-2. The guy's an absolute beast on Chaos Knight. I think he does a lot of cool plays and really shows us how to snowball a game specifically from the carry roll. So let's break it down, understand the landing stage, his rotations, and his item build. It's time to take control of your games by mastering the carry role. At GameLeap.com, we have hundreds of pro guides covering position one heroes, as well as an entire course dedicated completely to the carry role. Stop losing in the late game, period. Hit the discount link in the description below to steal the secrets of pros and unlock your hidden potential, especially as a carry player. So the first thing he does in the laning stage is something that I really think you should consider, especially when you're in a favorable lane. If you were gonna win the trade, you should zone the enemy off the wave, right? By the tier one. This basically is an attempt to prevent them from getting the early wave XP and secure you an easy deny. Now, the second thing he does in the landing stage is something you're probably all pretty common with, but this is draw creep aggro onto the range creep. A great way to get the creep equilibrium exactly where you want it is by drawing the melee creeps onto your range creep. And in that situation, he actually didn't see the Abaddon. So he makes an interesting play where he actually moves his camera top and uses, I believe, the Slark to draw aggro. So if you didn't know, creep aggro is actually global. So he pulls the melee creep using the Slark. He auto attacks the Slark and drags the wave onto his range creep. So pretty cool little niche play there. Now, Chaos Knight has received a, quite a few changes and his stun is much better at level 1. Its mana cost got reduced by 30. It's now a lot more reliable, right? The minimum stun is 1.25 seconds, and the damage is 90, which is pretty solid, right? But it only it goes all the way up to 180, so it actually is one of the best level 1 nukes if you get lucky. And you notice, in this situation, he's trading with this Abaddon, right? And has no problem whatsoever going for the stun right away. He's basically using it as his trade mechanism, especially because he has a mango. And upcoming here, you'll notice now, due to the fact that he's been harassing this Abaddon, He's able to pick up a kill, right? And that's the, the benefit of this new Chaos Knight stun. You can use it a lot more. It's more effective. And it allows him to pick up this kill, right? So, big, big deal to actually use your stun to harass. Once again, he throws it out on the Earth Spirit. You can see he's very loose with it. Unlike the old Chaos Knight where you'd run out of mana after two spells and maybe not even buy Mango due to the fact that you were just playing completely around last hits. Uh, this one's now a bit different. At least the way Arteezy's playing it. In terms of skibbled, I just want to note for the landing stage, you should put your third point into the Chaos Strike, and your doubles the amount of life steal you're going to get. And I understand, right, it's from 25 to 40%, but considering it also increases the potential critical max, it means that if you get a max hit with the life steal, uh, you're going to get a lot, a lot more health. And that's very significant and the main benefit of your hero. The strength of Chaos Knight in lane is purely, in my opinion, in the majority, the fact that you can completely sustain the lane with very little regen. You still want to buy regen, but very little regen due to the Chaos Strike. Now, in this next clip, you're going to see Arteezy has his Phase Boots and a Magic Wand. And due to the fact that he has the armor from the Phase Boots, the damage, um, and a Magic Wand, he's actually able to trade very, very effectively. It mostly comes down to the Phase Boots. Because you look at this trade, and the Abba was actually trading fairly well with him previously. But in this clip here, you notice, like, after a few right clicks, the Abba's half, and he's not, not doing too pa poorly, right? He's not doing poorly, and not only that... He actually has his passive one hit, and he's basically full HP with a tango. <laughs> so this next play is pretty funny. The Abaddon tries to man up on Arteezy, and you notice Abaddon is level 5, right? And I think Arteezy sees that, and he's like, okay, this is my last chance to really be able to properly kill the Abaddon. You know, he could burn his ult, but once Abaddon has ult, he's a much, much harder kill. That's that's a fact. And as a result, Arteezy has no problem with these phase boots chasing him all the way around the trees. Literally missing creeps to do this now i'm actually not certain if this is the best option but he, he apparently feels that preventing this abaddon from getting level six and maybe even opening up a kill in the next minute or two minutes again like because he's not six is a big deal right that kill not only gives him gold and xp but allows him to kill the abaddon once again right i just want to quickly mention the item build we see here so he's rushing a midas which i think is totally appropriate on a hero that doesn't have the best farming capabilities in dota however if you are having a poor lane or you think the game's a little bit difficult i recommend you rush the helm of iron will the component that gives you hp regeneration and armor 
for the armlet and this will make your landing stage a lot better and give you the ability to reliably jungle with no problem at all. Now your passive basically does that anyway so it's more so if you really just need to lane even better. So this is the first very cool play that RTC makes in this game. It's around 8 minutes in, he's farming extremely well, 46 last hits and 17 denies, and he backs off the wave and TPs mid when he sees a dive coming. And this phase boots, as well as the fact that he's a Chaos Knight, actually allows him to pick up a kill on the Sumail Invoker. And you know what he does right after that? Runs all the way back bottom. So really great efficiency, those type of heads up plays are not easy to execute. In fact, if you're not sure, you're not sure that you're going to get a kill. Right? And, and typically I would base it upon if they're diving or not. If you're not sure, you shouldn't do it because it's a large waste of time if you don't get anything out of it. So now it's two minutes past what you just saw and they're doing another mid dive, right? Another one. And he has no problem TPing in again. So this seems like a very optimal play, at least according to RTC, where if they dive mid, I don't think he would necessarily do the safe lane or do it to the off lane, especially considering there's a Bristleback there and Bristleback might just want to run at the Slark. Uh, that probably is just his optimal play. So instead, he's only doing it when they dive mid, and basically it guarantees that it's not too far away from bottom. He does it and gets right back, and I know I've said this twice, but it is very important. You want to make sure they're diving, TP in, and quickly get back to bottom. So upcoming here, I know I've been talking about rotations, but I think this is very important considering that Chaos Knight is like the rotation hero, uh, one of the better carries at doing this. So you notice that the Slark is pressuring his tier 1, um, and even going a bit far here. So he's going to try to TP out of vision, generally out of vision, going in between the trees here. I don't think it was fully out of vision, because the Slark does end up backing. Um, but you notice what he does is just straight up run at the Slark, like literally no hesitation, just runs at the Slark, gets the stun off off through the Dark Pact, and forces the Slark to TP away, right? They make sure he leaves. And what does this do? Pretty simple. It kicks the Slark out of the lane. If we see where the Slark is, he's all the way back at base and now has to run out and farm, right? So he's wasting a bit of efficiency. And not only that, RTC is going to get a tier 1 tower. So pretty nice farming rotation, right? He gets a tower, he leaves the lane of the Abaddon, who is giving him actually quite a bit of grief up until that point. And now he's just basically in a really good spot to farm because after, <laughs> after they all chat, but after this happens, he can farm the small camp, he can farm the large camp. This is a really nice place to be as a farming carry core, etc. Coming here, I don't know how this works. I mean, apparently this is a play. <laughs> he literally just... I, mean, I don't know how this works. Maybe your TC is just a god, but... Literally, no joke. He just sets up on Slark and kills him. That's it. And I just want to quickly mention uh, his next item. He bought an armlet as his next item. This gives you a lot of DPS. Make sure you turn it on before you Phantasm. And he's actually maxing the Chaos Bolt. And I think that's interesting because in the past I've definitely seen Chaos Knights maxing Reality Rift. So they have the 5 second cooldown at level 4 and can really destroy people with the low cooldown plus Phantasm. I just want to quickly mention and really talk about something that I find important. If you look at his last hits, they're actually generally low, right? The Slark actually has 112. However, if we look at the net worth, he's actually 2k above the Slark, and this is for a few reasons. One, because he's 8-0 with 4 assists. That's just, obviously, that's the main reason. There's no denying that. But also because a lot of his creeps have been, in particular, lane creeps. He has taken very little jungle creeps, and this is something that's pretty important for, for Chaos Knight. You don't jungle particularly fast. I mean, it's not slow, and you do have the lifesteal. However, what... RTC clearly values in this game is his ability to rotate from lane to lane and take lane creeps, right? That, that's his source of farm. Kills and lane creeps, much more than anything else. Alright, so in this upcoming clip, he gets gone on, and I just want to talk about a little bit about armlet usage and how you should be using it to actually bait people in, because I think this is a fantastic example of really knowing your limits. Part of this is just his experience, so he gets gone on here, cold snap EMP'd, fingered, kicked, and if you really break this down and look at his armlet, I know it, it's quick, it's quick, he's very quick with this, but he gets gone on, we'll slow it down. He gets gone on, armlet on, initially, then realizes that they don't, he doesn't think they have enough damage to kill him, at least based upon these heroes, so he turns it off to start, right? He gets fingered, kicked, etc. But then right when they're about to dive and get on top of him, then he turns on his wand, turns on his armlet, and all of a sudden... From 100 HP, he's 880, and the enemy team is very, very overcommitted, right? They're under the tier 1 tower at this point. So, really good bait by turning off the armlet, then turning on them <laughs> by activating the wand, activating the armlet, and overall just a great, great play to take a super advantageous fight. Not only that, he manages to armlet toggle through the spirit vessel, so absolutely fantastic.
So upcoming here, I just want to talk a bit about Phantasm usage because I think he makes a very, very interesting play here. So he goes on the Abaddon. This is super smart. He stuns the Abaddon and then doesn't send his main hero in the fray. See how he splits? Now, if you were to think about why he would do this, it's like, oh, well, doesn't your main hero do the most damage? Yes, but Reality Rift means that you basically don't need your main illusions on top of there, right? Because whoever he goes on next with the Reality Rift is going to connect all the illusions together. So instead of potentially getting hit by some Earth Spirit Silence... Um, so Lion or Spike, etc. I mean Lion's mid, so maybe that's not the case, but Earth Spirit spells, maybe an Invoker Tornado, etc. Instead, he micros his hero away, waiting for someone else to TP in. Now, nothing happened in this case, but I think that's a good start to, to look at different options to actually play the fights as Chaos Knight. Alright, so upcoming here, Artesia has picked up the Aegis, and now he's taking a fight. And the main thing I want to know here is he actually doesn't do anything crazy, he doesn't pop his Phantasm. I mean, a good Manta Dodge to keep himself alive, uh, purging off some of the spells, but... At this point, basically he's just using Reality Rift to continue to close the gap. He used the Aegis to bait out some spells, picks up a kill on the Slark. It's sort of a free fight, so really not, you know, nothing too special really to look at here besides the fact that he runs them down. And this is one of the main benefits of Chaos Knight, right? You're super good at catching. If people try to disengage, you have some of the best, best catch in the game. And what do you know, in typical RTC fashion, he's able to pick up the Rampage. Alright, in this upcoming clip, we're going to see Arteezy take the optimal fight and really show off how to exactly play a Chaos Knight. I mean, you walk in, you get silenced, no Manta up, and damn, sir. Well, <laughs> it must have been the wrong clip, but uh, got to be a little bit careful. And I think that's actually one of the main reasons why he had Manta. Obviously not trying to flame on him, it's just one mistake in, in a game full of very very good place but that's one of the main reasons why you actually do need the manta if you get controlled it's very hard especially against a spell like cold snap or a hero like earth spirit who can silence you abaddon who can silence you etc to have that manta so you can purge those off and get your ultimate off in that case he didn't even have his ultimate uh, so he really just got chain controlled but regardless that could be a main main point all right so this is going to be the last fight of the game, and we're going to wrap it up here, but he's got his ultimate popped off. Really cool combo with the Grimstroke. I think CK Grimstroke, not only did it prove to be very, very dominant in the laning stage, but you'll see here in this mini skirmish, basically a team fight, he's able to get a double pull into a double stun, absolutely destroying the Invoker and Lion. And yeah, it's really nice to have control with Chaos Knight. I think the hero can get kited actually fairly easily by uh, any sort of AoE control, such as an Invoker or a Lion. Even an Abaddon can actually help kite the Chaos Knight. But due to the fact that he has a Lina, a Rubik, you know, a Grimstroke in particular, he's able to make sure, you know, he can get some hits off. Otherwise, Chaos Knight is definitely a hero that can get kited. You know, I, I understand that I said earlier he has some of the best catch, which is true. But you have, do have to understand that you still need people to set up for you. Otherwise, your illusions might just get targeted. And, you know, you want someone else to initiate and maybe take some damage so that you can kite in and out of the fight and choose the targets that you want. Alright, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed or learned anything about RTZ or Chaos Knight, I would appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. And of course, in the comment section down below, let me know what carries you think are good right now. Because frankly, I'm still trying to figure it out for myself. I think Slark's pretty good. I think Chaos Knight's got some promise. You know, there's definitely some weird heroes. I've been seeing a little bit of Terror Blade here and there. So I'd like to hear what you guys think down there. Alright, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Tired of being sandbagged by your team? At GameLeap.com, we have pro guides covering some of the best heroes in the game to solo carry your ranked games, as well as, of course, specifically covering the carry role. Hit the link on screen right now to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, and start your journey today.